This is a special day because today we are celebrating the continuing work of the Spirit in the world by ordaining three new ministers. These three individuals who have been a part of this congregation over the last few years have been sharing their skills, have been giving up their time and energy and their enthusiasm. And they are here today asking for your affirmation and your blessing on their commitment to ministry. They've been training and studying and practicing to be conduits of God's love in the world through the church and in the community, in hospitals, prisons, the military, wherever people are in need of guidance and assurance of God's presence in the good times and in times of crisis. Now these three individuals have felt God's calling them to pursue this vocation. But ministry is not just an individual calling. It requires a congregation. It is intrinsically bound up in community. Even our somewhat secular culture understands this truth. Because if a person wants to become a chaplain, a chaplain for hospitals, for military service in the prison system, they must be ordained and recommended by a faith community. It can be a congregation, a synagogue, a temple, a mosque, but they live and work within community. And we believe that God works through individuals in community. And God's call is open to all people, just like God's love unconditionally. As a congregation, we hold central to our faith the words of Paul when he says, We are all children of God through faith in Christ Jesus. There is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male nor female, for we are all one now in Christ Jesus. No one is left out, and that's the point. The spirit of the living God is alive in the world and calling each of us to love one another to live to break down barriers, to let go of any beliefs that cause division, inviting us instead to build communities that build up and encourage growth with no conditions and no hierarchies, no partiality, with no one left out. So this ordination service is an important event in the life of this congregation because ordination is focused on the gifts of the individual person, and yet it requires that community of faith. And it is for the community, for it is both a privilege and a responsibility. This ordination is a setting apart of individuals. In this case, we are setting apart Alyssa Chester and Colleen de Graf Holtz and Joseph Bum Young, who have committed their lives to this reconciling work of God. Over the many centuries of the church, the church has developed this ordination process to acknowledge the continuation of God's mission in Christ in the world through spirit-called and spirit-gifted ministers. We view ordination as an act of worship, a worship by which the congregation as representatives of the whole people of God acclaims the ones being ordained as chosen, as strengthened by the Holy Spirit to exercise their gifts for ministry in the church and in the world. We recognize that God calls out some followers to a focused ministry. We acknowledge the special and unique calling of Alyssa and Colleen and Joseph today. But this is also your responsibility so my charge to you as the congregation is to remember that ordination is as much about the church as it is about each candidate. You are not simply bystanders or spectators. You are participants in this process. This church participates in the calling out and the affirmation of the commitment to those who stand before you today. Each of our candidates has been affirmed by an ordination council, and I want to thank all of the members of the congregation and friends of those candidates who have been a part of this process 
of walking with them in their ministry, of talking with them about their faith journey and affirming their calling into ministry. But what we do today is more than a ritual and a ceremony. What the church is doing today has purpose, has meaning that will last long beyond this day. What you do individually as you give them your blessing, as you join in prayer of commissioning, it is important. You are charged with the role of holding up Alyssa and Colleen and Joseph, making them accountable, upholding the privilege of the title of minister. Although we understand that this ordination is not a holier ministry than those given to each believer. It is rather a recognition of a particular call that these individuals have experienced, they have pursued and prepared for as they give their lives to ministry, to being the presence of God in life's most difficult times and places, through the work of the church and through chaplaincy. So today I ask you, the congregation of the Church of Ponce and Highland, to affirm your commitment to the ordination of Alyssa and Colleen and Joseph to the gospel ministry. So the question for you to answer today, do you, the members of this church, acknowledge and affirm Alyssa and Colleen and Joseph as ministers of the gospel, as servant leaders of this church being sent out to fulfill their calling wherever that call may take them? Will you continue to pray for them, to work together with them to accomplish the mission of the church? Will you give them your full support in the leadership of which they have been called out? And if you are willing to do that, please signify by saying, I do. Now I have a question for our candidates. I invite them to come back up here, bring your covenant of ordination with you. In the Gospel of Matthew, the overzealous mother of James and John asked Jesus to give her sons the most important positions when he comes into his power. And Jesus answers her with a question to the two young men. Can you drink the cup that I am going to drink? This is a symbol of what would become clear to them later as they followed him to the cross. It is a question before each person seeking to follow Christ in ministry. Can you drink the cup that Christ has drunk? It's a question that will have different meaning every day in your life. Can you embrace the sorrows as well as the joys that you will encounter in ministry each day? James and John didn't have the faintest idea of what they were saying when they answered yes. They barely understood at that point who Jesus was. They didn't think of him as a leader who would be betrayed and tortured and killed. That was yet to come. Nor did they dream that their own lives would be marked by tiresome travels, harsh persecutions, and eventually martyrdom. So that first yes that they gave had to be followed by many hard yeses until their lives were completely poured out. As their journey continued, they gradually discovered what, what it was that they had said yes to, as they learned about how to be a servant instead of a master, seeking the last place instead of the first place, and about giving up their lives instead of controlling other people's lives. They beheld, though, this glimpse of the kingdom of God that Jesus had been speaking of, and to that question, can you drink this cup? They said yes over and over. <clears throat> Drinking the cup of Christ, answering the call of God is an act of selfless love. It's an act of immense trust, an act of surrender to a God who will give us the strength we need as we need it. 
It turns our hope for a predictable future upside down. It will not be easy. It asks for the most radical trust in God and at the same time trust that made Jesus drink that cup to his last breath. So this is the question before you today. Can you drink this cup? Now I invite you to take your liturgy of commitment and join with me, those who have that in your program to follow and affirm at the end. Alyssa, Colleen, and Joseph, do you believe that you are truly called to be an ordained minister in the Church of Jesus Christ and with the help of God to serve faithfully in the fulfillment of the responsibilities of this ministry? I do, I do. God be my helper. Do you promise to be faithful in prayer and in the reading of scripture and through study to deepen your knowledge of divine truth and human experience? I do, God being my helper. Will you seek to bring others into an acceptance of the cost and the joy of discipleship and through faithful teaching, lead them into a full understanding of Christian commitment? I will, God being my helper. Will you have a loving concern for all people and give yourself to minister impartially to them without regard to social status, education, race, age, gender identity, sexual orientation, mental or physical ability, position, or any other distinction? I will, God be my helper. Will you endeavor to uphold the integrity of the church and to seek that unity in which all churches will manifest the one Lord, one faith, one baptism? I will, God be my helper. Now, people of God, you have heard the promises that these three have made. Will you now renew your commitment to Jesus Christ and to commit yourself to support these ministers with blessing and prayer? We affirm our baptism, our commitment to Jesus Christ, and our loyalty to the church universal. We covenant to uphold Melissa, Colleen, and Joseph with our prayers, to encourage them with our blessings, to send them forth in joy to serve the church and the world. Amen. You all are invited to sit here. And as Colin mentioned before, in lieu of laying on of hands, which we would normally do as a COVID precaution, we have now invited you to write a written blessing and then as Larry is singing, as music is playing, you can come down the center aisle and drop your cards into the basket, each one with each of those names. And they will be given to our ordinance for them to keep and cherish as a part of your commitment to their ministry. So now we will listen to some music. You can write those notes if they're written, bring them up by the center aisle and return to your seats. Thou callest, I gladly obey. Only direct me, and I'll find thy way. Teach me the mission appointed for me. What is my labor, and where it shall be? Master, thou callest, and this I reply. Yet I am mortal, and thou art. 
are divine Harden whenever I turn from the right Pity me and bring me again to the light Master, thou callest and this I reply Ready and willing Lord, here am I Here am I Now I invite you to join with me in a prayer of dedication for our newly ordained ministers to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Join with me now in prayer. May the blessings released through your hands cause windows to open in darkened minds. May the sufferings of your calling bring but be a winter before the spring. May the companionship of your doubt restore what your beliefs leave out. May your solitude be a voyage into the wilderness and wonder of God. May your words have the prophetic edge to enable the heart to hear itself. May you find words full of divine warmth to clothe the dying in the language of dawn. And may the light of Christ and the Spirit of God be a sure shelter 
around your future. This is our prayer for you and with you. In Christ's name, we pray this together. Amen. Amen.